Good afternoon, my fellow scientists. It is Wednesday, October 4th, 2017, and I want to talk to you about the iron battery. Built another cell. This time I used Natheon as my separator, and that worked a lot better. I got a full 0.6 volts out of this cell. The new cell is charging and discharging. I'll show you the charge discharge of the old one here uh, in a second, but this is, is definitely holding up considerably better. It the way I assemble it is not ideal. I don't try to keep this catholite separate from the anode, which is a better chemical, a better efficient work chemistry, but inevitably, because it's a fairly leaky system, uh, there's going to be an equilibration and the catholite is going to get in around the anode. And so I just pour them in to begin with, just to see how the battery is going to end up at the very end and that does take some time for it to uh, <laughs> come to steady state because of that because essentially I start discharged instead of starting charged so the battery the new one is uh, is working on coming to a steady state but I'm putting it through a mild charge discharge cycle for the next 24 to 48 hours and we'll see what kind of uh, stability we get definitely a better performance cell the questions now are how much difference does the gold make how much difference does the nafion make as compared to the in situ polymerized membrane that i made last time it'd be pretty cool to find out that that modestly ion selected membrane that i made myself was comparable to nafion in, in this particular instance though i suspect nafion is going to be better in general. So on the left side there you have the anode side and the iron is going to oxidize to iron 2 plus releasing electrons which flow through the load. On the other side you have the iron 3 plus being reduced to iron 2 plus accepting those electrons and to balance the charge you need a salt bridge. The design I've come up with to actually build the cell looks a little different but everything functions the same way. There's a little nafion packet that holds the iron which oxidizes to 2 plus releasing electrons which then flow around through the load back into a gold foil on the back of carbon. The carbon then allows the electrons to flow into the iron 3 plus to produce iron 2 plus and the charge gets neutralized by the nafion. I actually did build this little cell in a plastic bag. That's it in the little packet standing up on the left. Hooked it up to that pine wave now meter and I've got it cycling up and down in its capacity, but it's not at all stable. Unfortunately, this particular packet was using a paper separator, not Nafion, and yeah, not so great. So today, I rebuilt the cell with the Nafion membrane instead of just a paper separator, and the results I'm hopeful will be better. So the way you put Nafion into this is you buy a liquid that has this Nafion perfluorinated polymer in a partial, like an alcohol solution, and you apply that to paper and let it dry. And once it dries, you can beat up water on the top of it. So that little wet patch is where water was applied to an untreated piece of paper, and the water uh, beads up on the patch that was treated. Fold that up into a little packet, put the iron into the packet and then assemble the cell. The gold is just really hard to handle, but with care, I got it built and we'll see how that performance changes. If you like that kind of thing, uh, do tune in Monday through Friday. We talk about chemistry, batteries, and how to build an iron cell right here in the Allen Lab.